Bismillah Rahman Rahim. I welcome you all to this session uh, on tuberculosis. This is the second lecture of the tuberculosis lecture series. Today I will be discussing with you about the epidemiological indices of TB. We will uh, discuss in length case finding techniques for early diagnosis. Then I will highlight revised definitions of TB cases and treatment. We will discuss treatment outcome definitions, treatment outcomes for TB patients. Um, I will just give you a flavor of first line anti-TB therapy. Then we will discuss control of tuberculosis, prevention, economic and social burden of disease and factors which affect the quality of life of TB patients. This is just a review. Uh, what is tuberculosis? It's an infectious bacterial disease caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis, most commonly uh, which affects the lungs. And it is transmitted from person to person via droplets from the throat and lungs of people with active respiratory disease. Um, I discussed in the last lecture in detail uh, moving on from tuberculosis and I covered a lot of things uh, including the epidemiology uh, and uh, prevention also. Uh, today we will be discussing something different as highlighted in the uh, initial objectives or contents. Uh, the first thing which I will like to discuss with you are the tuberculin uh, epidemiological indices of TB. Uh, as far as the epidemiological indices of TB are concerned, these serve as yardsticks to measure the problem of tuberculosis in community as well as program planning uh, of a control strategy. So uh, they would be a little bit revealing in this. Uh, I might be repeating a few things, but uh, uh, the, the purpose is that uh, to emphasize the importance so that um, you can remember things uh, what are imp important and what need to be focused on. As far as the tuberculin index is concerned, it's the percentage of individuals with a positive reaction to the standard tuberculin test in a defined age group. This shows the prevalence of infection in that age group. And uh, then we have the tuberculin conversion index, which is also known as the annual tuberculosis infection rate. Uh, and this shows the proportion of population under study who will be infected with tubercle bacilli in the course of one year. Um, this tuberculin conversion index uh, shows the incidence of infection in a community and if repeated it shows its trend in that community. And uh, this indeed is the best uh, indicator for evaluating the tuberculosis problem uh, uh, and its future trend. Then we have the the prevalence of sputum positive cases uh, and it is the number of persons uh, excreting tubercle bacilli as shown by microscopic examination of sputum and it is the case uh, index of the size of infections in a com community. And then uh, the fourth one is the prevalence of chest x-ray shadows. Uh, well, I would say no definite epidemiological significance can be given to the index as there can be misinterpretation for shadows other than tuberculosis. Uh, bacteriological confirmation becomes uh, necessary for confirmation. Uh, but um, when I will be discussing with you case finding methods over there, I will discuss with you a little bit more detail of this chest x-ray uh, uh, used as a technique for case finding. Then we have uh, prevalence of drug resistant resistance cases and it is the prevalence of persons excreting tubercle bacilli resistant to anti-tuberculous drugs. Uh, this index uh, uh, will also help you to interpret results in relation to chemotherapy. And then we uh, have the mortality rates. Uh, I will discuss uh, 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 this in more detail in the next slide. Uh, then, as far as uh, these epidemiological indices are concerned, uh, these are parameters which are needed to measure the tuberculosis problem in a community. As well as for planning, as I already mentioned, 
but also for the uh, evaluation of control measures and uh, indices are also required for international comparisons. Uh, furthermore, uh, as far as incidence is concerned, uh, this is defined as the number of new and recurrent relapse episodes of TB, which includes all forms of TB uh, occurring in a given year. And recurrent episodes are defined as the new episode of TB in people who have uh, had TB in the past and for whom uh, there uh, was bacteriological confirmation of cure or documentation that treatment was completed. Uh, these, uh, re uh, however, people uh, with uh, a continuing episode of TB, I would say, uh, uh, require a treatment change uh, are prevalent cases and not incident cases. Uh, moving on to prevalence, uh, 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 this uh, uh, is the number of TB cases of all forms at a given point in time and uh, it is the best available practical index to estimate the caseload in a community. The age-specific prevalence of patients is considered the most relevant index. Uh, in the last slide, I said I'll discuss uh, in more detail about mortality from TB. So mortality from TB uh, is, uh, uh, I would define it as the number of deaths caused by TB in HIV negative people, uh, according to the latest review of international classification of diseases. Uh, TB deaths among HIV positive people are uh, classified as HIV deaths uh, in the international classification of diseases. And uh, for this reason, uh, estimates of deaths from TB in HIV positive people are presented separately from those in HIV negative people. Uh, then we have the uh, case fatality rate, uh, which is the risk of death from TB uh, among people with active TB disease. Then we have the case notification rate, uh, which refers to new and recurrent episodes of TB notified to the World Health Organization for a given year. And uh, that is expressed per 100,000 population. And the case notification rate for new and recurrent TB is uh, important in the estimation of TB incidence. Uh, uh, in some countries, uh, however, information on treatment history may be missing for some cases. And when uh, data on treatment history are not available, recurrent cases cannot be uh, distinguished from cases where treatment was changed since both are registered and reported in the category retreatment. Um, and patients reported in the unknown uh, history category are considered incident TP episodes, new or relapse. So this is a change from the previous years uh, in view of past difficulties to, um, uh, uh, in estimation. Uh, um, after case notification rate, uh, uh, I haven't mentioned over here, but I recall there's a case detection rate. Uh, you should also note it down. And uh, the case detection rate is calculated as the number of uh, notification of new and relapse cases uh, in a year divided by the estimated incidence of such cases in the same year. Finally, we have the prevalence of drug resistant cases and uh, it is the prevalence of uh, patient excreting tubercle bacilli resistant to anti-tuberculous drugs. And uh, this index is directly related to chemotherapy. And uh, it, is, uh, uh, it has two components. Uh, one is uh, the prevalence of infection. Uh, it is the percentage of individuals who show positive reaction to the standard tuberculin test. And when the test is done in uh, defined age groups, it yields age specific prevalence which is far more uh, superior indicator than the mere uh, percentage of positive uh, reactions in the total population. And uh, the second component in uh, this prevalence of drug resistance cases is the incidence of infection. And this is the, uh, um, um, I would say, uh, annual infection rate. Uh, it is the percentage of population under study who will be newly infected by mycobacterium tuberculosis among the non-infected um, uh, of the preceding survey during the course of one year. Uh, uh, this uh, reflects the annual risk of being infected or reinfected in a given, given community. And uh, in developing countries, every 1% of uh, 
uh, annual risk of infection is said to correspond to 50 new cases of smear positive pulmonary tuberculosis per year for 100,000 uh, general population, uh, um, also known as uh, tuberculin conversion index. Uh, now I would like to uh, discuss with you uh, some uh, case finding techniques for early diagnosis. As far as uh, the case finding uh, techniques for uh, early diagnosis are concerned, uh, I also discussed uh, these with you in my uh, previous uh, lecture uh, and we went into detail about them, discussing them in detail. Uh, but uh, over here, I would, uh, uh, I would say that uh, these are very important. That is, uh, that is why I am just repeating them. Uh, the tuberculin test, one of the most important, uh, uh, has been stated uh, um, in all the textbooks uh, everywhere. And the tuberculin test is easy to perform and can give positive uh, information as to whether or not a person has had tubercular infection. And tuberculous surveys in children uh, uh, also give an indication of prevalence of infectious cases in the population. Higher the tuberculin reactor rate, higher is the level of infection in the community. So tuberculin surveys also indicate the priority areas where anti-tuberculous measures should be applied urgently. Uh, the next is uh, uh, the X-ray examination and uh, by X-ray examinations, the second group of tuberculin positive people can be further divided into those who have uh, had healed tuberculosis, requiring no attention and those who are suffering from tuberculosis. And um, we do mass miniature radiography. I'll discuss this uh, later on uh, in today's lecture. Then we have uh, the sputum examination. By examination of sputum, uh, it is possible to distinguish the person suffering from tuberculosis into uh, one of the two categories. The first is those who are positive, uh, and uh, the second is those uh, who are sputum negative. It is important uh, over here, I would say that it is important to identify the sputum positive cases as they form the infector pool. Uh, and then sputum microscopy for AFB is now regarded as the single most effective method for diagnosis of infected cases of tuberculosis. As far as uh, mass miniature radiography is concerned, um, it is a common observation that many people who have tuberculosis uh, may be free of symptoms and uh, even of physical signs. So X-ray examination in these people is the only criterion where uh, by a presumptive diagnosis of tuberculosis can be made. And um, ideally the entire population should be X-rayed for evidence of disease but the standard size films are very expensive and the examination of a large number of people is time consuming. And uh, these difficulties have been um, overcome uh, by the introduction of a 70 mm uh, miniature uh, photofluorographic camera installed in mobile vans. And uh, this mobile apparatus called mass miniature radiography, the unit is uh, relatively cheaper and uh, quicker to operate and gives efficient results. And it is, uh, I would say, pr preferable to use mobile units, especially in large cities and industrial areas. Uh, as regards uh, examination, again, I would uh, like to talk about it, examination of sputum. Once the cases have been found, they can be broadly classified as infection cases with uh, positive sputum, cases which are not infectious but are potentially dangerous as they may become infectious at a later date. And uh, then cases who have been treated and have become infectious but are likely to uh, uh, become infectious uh, if not supervised and followed up for the prevention of tuberculosis. Uh, I would say it is necessary that infectious cases are rendered non-infectious 
and bacteriological control therefore is essential from the control point of view. Uh, and this uh, sputum microscopy uh, gives uh, direct indications of infectious cases. And um, uh, discussion on case finding, uh, 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 we, the things we have discussed uh, confirm the diagnosis of pulmonary tuberculosis because this is the most common manifestation of tuberculosis. Although in our previous uh, uh, lecture, in my previous lecture, I also discussed about the extra pulmonary uh, uh, tuberculous cases. Uh, well, uh, now I would uh, like to highlight uh, some revised definition of tuberculosis, uh, tuberculosis cases uh, and some uh, and treatment. And uh, as far as these uh, revised uh, uh, definitions are concerned, the World Health Organization uh, has issued updated guidance on definitions of cases and treatment outcomes. Uh, uh, which are asso uh, uh, and associated reporting framework and uh, these updates were uh, necessary to accommodate diagnosis using uh, expert um, like uh, MDB, RIF and other WH endorsed molecular tests as well as uh, offering an opportunity to improve the aspects of um, existing framework such as inclusion of more comprehensive reporting of TB cases among children so the up, uh, when we uh, start discussing the updated definitions, uh, uh, we need to discuss presumptive case and uh, presumptive TB refers to a patient uh, who presents with symptoms or signs suggestive of TB previously known as a TB suspect. Uh, then moving on to the case definitions. Uh, the first is a bacteriologically confirmed case um, and the bacteriologically confirmed TB case is one from whom a biological specimen is positive by smear microscopy uh, culture or through um, uh, expert or MTB or RIF all uh, I would say such cases should be notified regardless whether TB treatment has started or not. And then, uh, uh, as you can see in the slide, our clinically diagnosed uh, a TB case uh, is one uh, who does not fulfill the criteria for bacteriological confirmation, but has been diagnosed with active TB by a clinician or other medical practitioner who has decided to give the patient a full course of uh, uh, TB treatment. Uh, and uh, this definition includes cases diagnosed on the basis of X-ray abnormalities or suggestive histology and extra pulmonary cases without laboratory confirmation. Uh, clinically diagnosed cases subsequently uh, found to be bacteriologically positive before or after starting treatment should be reclassified as bacteriologically confirmed. And uh, uh, when we talk about bacteriologically confirmed or clinically diagnosed cases of TB, uh, we can further classify them into uh, anatomical site of disease or uh, history of previous treatment, drug resistance, uh, HIV status. So all of these are important. And uh, if we uh, talk about the classification based on anatomical site of disease, um, uh, this may uh, 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 this will include pulmonary tuberculosis, which refers to any bacteriologically confirmed or clinically diagnosed case of TB involving the lung parenchyma or the tracheobronchial tree and uh, miliary tuberculosis which I discussed with you in the last lecture is classified uh, uh, um, uh, in, uh, in a manner that there are lesions in the lungs and uh, tu uh, tuberculous uh, infrathoracic lymphadenopathy which is mediastinal or hyla uh, or tuberculous pleural effusion with radiographic abnormalities in the lungs constitutes a case of extra pulmonary tuberculosis. 
and uh, a patient with both pulmonary and extra pulmonary tuberculosis should be classified as a case uh, of pulmonary uh, tuberculosis. Then we have extra pulmonary tuberculosis which refers to any bacteriologically confirmed or clinically diagnosed case of TB uh, involving uh, organs other than the lungs um, which may include uh, the pleura, uh, the lymph nodes, uh, ab abdomen, genitourinary tract, skin, joints, uh, bones and the meninges. Uh, Further moving on further, uh, the other is the classification based on history of previous TB treatment. Uh, and uh, this classification based on history of previous TB treatment uh, are slightly different from those previously defined. And uh, they focus only on history of previous treatment and are independent of bacteriological confirmation or uh, site of disease. So um, what are new patients? Uh, new patients are uh, uh, those patients who have never been treated for TB or have, be, have taken anti-TB drugs for less than one month. So these are new patients. Then uh, who are the previously treated patients? Uh, the uh, patients uh, who received one month or more of anti-TB drugs in the past uh, and they are further classified by the outcome of their most uh, recent course of uh, treatment. Uh, which uh, includes relapse patients uh, and as far as relapse patients are concerned uh, relapse patients have previously been treated for TB uh, and uh, were declared cured or uh, treatment completed at the end of their most recent course of treatment and are now diagnosed with a recurrent episode of TB either a true relapse or a new episode of TB caused by reinfection. Uh, then uh, treatment uh, after failure patients are those who have uh, previously been treated for TB and whose treatment failed at the end of the most recent course uh, of treatment. Uh, then we have the treatment after loss to follow up patients have previously been treated for TB and were uh, declared uh, lost to follow up at the end of their most recent course of treatment. Uh, well, I, uh, these were previously known as treatment after default patients. Uh, then um, we have the other previously treated patients are uh, those uh, who have previously been treated for TB but whose outcome after their most recent course of treatment is unknown or undocumented. Then uh, finally we have patients with unknown previous treatment uh, history. Uh, they do not fit into any of the categories uh, listed above and uh, new and relapsed cases of TB are incident TB cases. Uh, still we have another uh, kind of classification which is uh, based on uh, drug resistance. Uh, a classification based on drug resistance and uh, cases are classified in categories based on drug susceptibility testing uh, of clinical isolates confirmed uh, uh, to be mycobacterium tuberculosis and uh, these uh, may include uh, the mono resistance uh, mono resistance means the resistance to more than one uh, oh, sorry, I would say uh, uh, mono resistance uh, is the resistance to one first line and uh, anti-TB drug only. Then we have the poly drug resistance and uh, the poly drug resistance is resistance to more than one first line anti-TB drug other than both uh, uh, isoniazid and rifampicin. And then we have the multi drug resistance the resistance to at least both isoniazid and rifampicin. Then uh, we have the extensive drug resistance. Uh, this is the resistance to any um, uh, uh, fluoroquinolones uh, and at least one of uh, the three second line injectable drugs. Uh, 
uh, which uh, include um, uh, uh, capriomycin, kenamycin or amikacin uh, in addition to multi-drug resistance. And then uh, we have the rifampicin resistance. Resistance to rifampicin uh, detected using phenotypic or genotypic methods uh, with or without resistance to other anti-TB drugs. And uh, it includes any resistance to rifampicin, uh, whether monoresistance, multi-drug resistance, polydrug resistance, or extensive drug resistance. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, these categories are uh, not uh, all mutually exclusive. Uh, when enumerating uh, rifampicin resistant TB, for instance, uh, multi-drug resistant TB, uh, uh, which uh, is abbreviated as MDRTB, and uh, extensively uh, drug resistant TB, uh, which is abbreviate, uh, abbreviated as XTX. DRTB are also included and uh, while it has been the practice until now to limit the definitions of uh, monoresistance and polydrug resistance to first line drugs only, uh, future drug uh, regimens may uh, make it important to classify patients by their strain resistance patterns to fluoroquinolones, second line injectable agents and any uh, other anti-TB drug for which uh, reliable uh, 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 drug resistance uh, becomes available. Uh, finally, we have the classification based on uh, HIV status and uh, HIV positive TB patients refer to any bacteriologically confirmed uh, uh, or clinically diagnosed case of TB. Uh, who has positive result from HIV testing conducted at the time of uh, TB diagnosis or other documented evidence of enrollment in HIV care. Uh, such an enrollment uh, uh, in, the, um, in the patient's register or in the uh, ART register uh, once ART has been started, entry retroviral therapy. Uh, and uh, as far as uh, the, uh, these are concerned, we have the HIV a positive TB patient which refers to any bacteriologically confirmed or clinically diagnosed case of TB who has a positive result from HIV testing conducted at the time of TB diagnosis or uh, other documented evidence of enrollment in HIV care. Such uh, an enrollment uh, in the pre-ART register or in the ART register once ART has been started. Uh, then we have the HIV negative TB uh, patient uh, which refers to any bacteriologically confirmed or clinically diagnosed case of TB who has negative result from HIV testing conducted at the time of TB diagnosis and uh, any HIV negative TB patient subsequently found to be HIV positive should be reclassified accordingly. And then finally we have the HIV uh, uh, cases in which HIV status is unknown. Um, TB patient refers to any bacteriologically confirmed or clinically diagnosed case of TB who has no result of HIV testing and no other documented evidence of enrollment in, in uh, HIV care. And uh, uh, if the patient, uh, patient's HIV status is subsequently determined, uh, he or she should be reclassified accordingly. Uh, with this, uh, uh, um, I think I conclude, uh, uh, I would like to conclude with the revised definitions of tuberculosis cases uh, and treatment. Uh, now I will uh, like to discuss with you uh, the, the treatment and outcome definitions. Uh, these are also uh, very important. Uh, as far as the uh, treatment and uh, treatment uh, outcome definitions are concerned, uh, the, I would uh, rather say that the new treatment outcomes uh, 
Yeah, that's it. Uh, treatment outcome definitions uh, uh, make a clear distinction between two types of patients. And uh, the first are the patients treated for drug susceptible TB. And uh, the second are patients treated for drug resistant TB using second line treatment uh, defined as combination chemotherapy for drug resistant tuberculosis which includes uh, drugs other than uh, uh, those uh, which we uh, discussed in the last chapter. Uh, the two groups are mutually exclusive. Uh, uh, any patient found to have drug resistant TB and placed on second line treatment is removed from the drug susceptible TB outcome cohort. And uh, this means that uh, 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 management of the standard TB register uh, and uh, of the second line TB treatment register needs to be coordinated to ensure proper accounting of the outcomes of uh, treatment. Uh, treatment outcomes for TB patients, excluding patients treated for uh, Uh, resistant TB cases or uh, multiple drug resistant, rifampicin resistant or multi drug resistant TB, uh, all bacteriologically confirmed and clinically diagnosed TB cases should be assigned an outcome uh, from uh, uh, the following list uh, of outcomes which I have shown on this uh, uh, slide. Um, uh, uh, except uh, uh, those with uh, uh, rifampicin resistant TB or multi drug resistant TB who are placed on a second line uh, drug uh, regimen. And uh, when we come to these outcomes, uh, I will uh, discuss with you only treatment outcomes for TB patients, including patients treated for uh, uh, rifampicin resistant or uh, MDR uh, TB. And uh, as far as uh, the first outcome is uh, concerned uh, is whether the patient was cured or not. And uh, I would define it as a pulmonary TB patient with bacteriologically confirmed TB at the beginning of treatment who was smear or culture negative in the last month of treatment and on uh, at least one previous occasion. And uh, as far as treatment completed is concerned, it could be defined as a TB patient who completed treatment without evidence of failure, uh, but uh, with no record to show that sputum smear or culture results in the last uh, month of treatment uh, and uh, on at least one previous occasion were negative, either because tests were not done or uh, because the results are unavailable. Uh, then uh, as far as treatment failed is concerned, uh, uh, I think we, uh, we would define it as a TB patient whose sputum smear or culture is positive at uh, month 5 or later during treatment. Then uh, as far as uh, died, uh, the patients who have died, um, a TB patient who dies uh, for any reason before starting or during the course of treatment. So this is also uh, an important outcome. Then last uh, uh, loss to follow up. Uh, this is a TB patient who did not start treatment or whose treatment was interrupted for two consecutive months or more. Then um, coming to the non-evaluated, uh, these are, uh, uh, or this is a TB patient for whom no uh, treatment outcome is assigned. And uh, this include cases uh, transferred out to another treatment unit or a treatment center as well as cases for whom the treatment outcome is unknown uh, to the uh, reporting uh, center or unit. And then finally we have the treatment uh, success cohort and this is the sum of cured and uh, treatment completed uh, a group of patients in whom TB has been uh, diagnosed and uh, who were registered for treatment during the specified time period example uh, the cohort uh, of new smear positive cases registered in the calendar year. Uh, this group forms uh, the denominator for calculating treatment outcomes and the sum of the treatment outcomes plus any case uh, for which no outcome is uh, recorded 
example, still on treatment, uh, should equal to the number of cases registered. Uh, I will just give you a brief flavor of uh, uh, the, the outcomes for rifampicin resistant TB or MDR TB or extensively drug resistant TB and patients treated using second line treatment. Uh, when we discuss about the outcomes in these patients, uh, then cured means treatment completed as recommended by the national policy or uh, now in our case uh, after the 18th amendment uh, uh, the national policies are translated into the provincial policies and uh, 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 I would say over here uh, that treatment completed as recommended by the policy uh, um, of the program TB uh, control program without evidence of failure and uh, three or more consecutive cultures taken at least 30 days apart are negative after the intensive phase. So these are cured patients. Uh, then uh, uh, as far as treatment completed is concerned, treatment completed as recommended by the uh, uh, defined policy without evidence of failure, but no record that uh, there, uh, uh, that three or more consecutive cultures uh, taken at least 30 days apart are negative after the intensive phase. I would just now come to the, uh, the final treatment success cohort and uh, the sum of this includes the sum of the cured and uh, uh, treatment completed. Uh, it is a group of patients uh, where uh, rifampicin resistant TB has been diagnosed uh, including multiple drug resistant and extensively drug resistant and uh, who were started uh, on a full course of second line multi drug resistant uh, TB drug uh, regimen during a specified time period. Example the cohort of uh, multiple drug resistant TB cases uh, recognized in the calendar year. And uh, this group forms the denominator for calculating treatment outcomes uh, with the revised definitions. Uh, any patient found to have drug resistant TB and placed on second line treatment is removed from the drug susceptible TB uh, outcome cohort. And uh, this uh, means that the management of the basic management unit uh, TB register uh, and the second line TB treatment register needs to be coordinated to ensure proper accounting of the outcome treatment. Uh, this uh, diagram uh, shows you 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 the treatment outcomes for uh, TB patients. I'll give you a while to just go through this uh, uh, slide. Uh, well, treatment outcomes for participating multi-drug resistant tuberculosis uh, patients receiving MDR treatment uh, and uh, non-MDR-TB uh, treatment. Uh, uh, the circles from inside to outside uh, repre represented treatment regimen. Uh, then treatment outcomes at the end of treatment course and treatment outcomes uh, at the last follow-up. Uh, I, I took this slide from a study just to give you an overview that uh, how uh, the treatment outcomes uh, 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 were kind of plotted over here, how the thing moves on. Uh, this is another slide I would like to share with you and uh, you should go through it. Uh, it is self-explanatory. I don't need to explain it to you. Uh, this is a patient initiated pathway that uh, if a patient accesses healthcare, uh, what are the screening pathways and uh, uh, how we can minimize barriers to healthcare access, um, how we can strengthen identification of patients with suspected TB, um, and um, as you can see, improving knowledge and awareness is important, and ensuring quality short diagnosis then improve uh, referral and notification practices. Uh, I, I'll just give you a while, you can just go through it.
now uh, moving on to treatment uh, uh, we discussed treatment uh, in our uh, in my last uh, lecture which was the first lecture of this series on tuberculosis uh, over here as you can see in this chart uh, it is the mechanism of action dosage and most common adverse effects of the first line anti tuberculous therapy so again this chart is self explanatory uh, but uh, um, uh, all the main drugs including is uh, isoniazid rifampicin ethambutol pyrazinamide and streptomycin um, uh, this chart shows their mechanism of action how these drugs work and uh, what is the dose uh, how do we calculate the dose which is a milligram per kg a body weight per day so you can um, uh, also consult it later on and then adverse effects are important and uh, one of the reasons why at times uh, uh, treatment is discontinued uh, is because of these adverse effects there are uh, several uh, reasons for discontinuation of treatments um, uh, without completing the complete uh, treatment uh, uh, there is a dropout rate uh, so there are different reasons for the dropout but one reason are the adverse effects so um, we need to counter the adverse effects also but uh, you can just go through this chart and see and then we move forward Well, now uh, we move forward to control of TB. Uh, TB control means the reduction in the prevalence and incidence of disease in the community, and the most powerful uh, weapon, however, is the combination of case finding and treatment. Uh, when it comes to case finding. Uh, we divide it into the case the target group intensified tb case finding you can just go through it and uh, then we will discuss it further then we have the screening strategies community screening can be done institutional screening can be done we have the case finding tools uh, which includes sputum examination uh, uh, we've already discussed it but uh, i would just give you again uh, highlighted that sputum smear examination by direct microscopy uh, is now considered the most uh, is is the considered the method of choice Uh, and the reliability cheapness and ease of direct microscopic examination has made it uh, number one case finding method all over the world and it enables us to discover the epidemiologically most important cases of pulmonary tuberculosis that is those uh, uh, excreting tubercle bacilli in their sputum and uh, this is the group which contributes Uh, most of the new cases to the pool of uh, infection every year uh, then uh, uh, as far as uh, sputum examination is concerned uh, i also discussed it in my last uh, uh, lecture uh, that uh, two sub subsequent samples or uh, at times even three samples on uh, three different days need to be taken Uh, to uh, diagnose and then we have the zeal nelson acid fast staining uh, 
uh, which is uh, a simple stain uh, which detects acid fast bacilli. Uh, as far as uh, the procedure is concerned, uh, uh, well, uh, okay, I'll uh, just uh, give you a brief overview that uh, it has different steps. Uh, the first is to fix the smear on the slide by passing the slide with the smear um, up about three times slowly through a flame. Uh, it can also be done by covering the smear with alcohol and letting this evaporate. Then uh, cover with alcohol uh, fusion uh, steam gently for 5 uh, minutes uh, over direct flame or for 20 minutes over water bath. Uh, do not uh, permit uh, slide to boil or to dry out. Then uh, wash the deionized water. Uh, then uh, uh, the fourth step would be to decolorize in 3% um, uh, acid alcohol uh, uh, until only a faint pink color remains. Uh, then um, we wash with water, then counter stain for one minute uh, with uh, Loeffler's methyl methylene blue and finally wash with deionized water and let it dry. And then um, uh, the, we do the slide reporting and as far as slide reporting is concerned the number of bacilli seen in a smear reflects disease severity and patient infectivity and uh, therefore it is important to record the number of bacilli seen on uh, each smear. Uh, the table uh, uh, like uh, uh, if we are uh, uh, seeing the number of bacilli during uh, slide reporting and how do we report it? Uh, if we see uh, if AB, uh, AFB per uh, uh, 100 oil immersion fields um, uh, is zero, so there are no tubercle bacilli. If there are uh, more than uh, 10, it is uh, strongly positive. Then uh, Laboratory uh, technicians should examine both the sputum samples from each TB suspect. Uh, they must re record the result of each sputum sample uh, with the laboratory reference number in the laboratory register and on the sputum request form. And results as indicated, uh, uh, as I discussed with you, uh, are made available to the clinician who can then categorize the patient. Uh, one positive uh, specimen out of the two is enough to declare a patient as smear positive TB. Uh, a little bit about false positive, false negative results. Uh, as far as false positive results of sputum smear microscopy are concerned, um, a false positive result means that the sputum smear result is positive even though the patient does not readily uh, if we really have uh, sputum uh, smear positive uh, uh, tuberculosis and uh, this may arise uh, because of the uh, reason that the red stain retained by scratches on the slide, uh, accidental transfer of AFBs from a positive slide to a negative one, contamination of slide or uh, smear by environmental mycobacteria or uh, presence of various particles that are acid fast example food particles precipitates other microorganisms uh, then as far as false uh, false uh, negative results of sputum cancer microscopy is concerned uh, a false negative result means that the sputum smear result is negative even though the patient really does uh, have sputum smear uh, uh, positive and uh, TB. Uh, this uh, may arise because of inappropriate sputum container used um, or sputum stored uh, too long before smear microscopy was done. Um, the processing uh, is faulty, like faulty sampling of sputum for smear or faulty smear preparation and staining or uh, um, it can include interpreting sputum smears, inadequate time spent on examining smear or uh, inadequate attention to smear examination. Um, it can also be because of uh, administrative errors, misidentification uh, of patient, in incorrect labeling of sample or mistakes in documentation. Uh, then uh, we have uh, 
fluorescence microscopy i haven't mentioned over here but fluorescence microscopy is mainly used in in uh, industrialized countries and it is performed with uh, um, a, a, a probably by oramine stain and the uh, advantage of uh, if a fluorescence microscopy is uh, from the speed uh, of examination the field of view is 5 to 10 times bigger scanning of one length of smear will require only 1 to 2 minutes uh, then there is another one which is not mentioned on this slide is the light emitting uh, diode uh, fluorescence uh, fluoroscopy um, uh, we also called it leds and uh, a w uh, in recent who evaluation the diagnostic accuracy of uh, led microscopy was found to be uh, comparable to that of conventional fluorescence microscopy and superior to that uh, of conventional uh, zeil nelson microscopy uh, it is therefore recommended that led microscopy uh, be phased in as an alternative to conventional zn light microscopy in both the high and low income uh, low volume laboratories and uh, also to be introduced in developing countries then um, we have uh, radiography chest x rays are useful uh, for the diagnosis of smear negative pulmonary tuberculosis and tb in children uh, it is not routinely indicated in smear positive cases and uh, x rays are valuable tools for the diagnosis of pleural and pericardial effusion especially in early stages of disease when clinical signs are minimal uh, and it is a, a essential in the diagnosis of miliary tuberculosis uh, the un, other indications um, uh, are uh, frequent or uh, severe hemoptysis to exclude bronchiectasis um, and uh, in patients needing specific treatment for uh, pneumothorax um further as far as control of tb is concerned you can just go through this list and then i will uh, discuss with you um, each of them the uh, sputum culture is also important and the isolation of microbacteria from uh, clinical samples by culture still represents Uh, uh, the cornerstone on which definitive diagnosis of tuberculosis and other micro my, mycobacteriosis bacteriosis is relies um, and uh, at present mycobacterial culture can be performed on conventional egg based solid medium uh, such as uh, uh, lovenstein jensen medium and agar based ones uh, such as uh, middle uh, brook and liquid media such as uh, uh, kachner's or uh, middle brook broth of course this is uh, a little bit beyond the scope but i just want to give you a flavor and the major constraint of culturing microbacteria at conventional media is uh, 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 its slow growth uh, which necessitates a mean incubation period of at least 4 weeks Uh, normally when we give a blood culture it is uh, the results come up in around uh, 48 hours 24 to 48 hours but over here the major constraint of culturing microbacteria uh, uh, in conventional media is the slow growth um, which may take up to 4 weeks and the dr drug susceptibility test to anti uh, uh, tuberculosis drugs require an additional 4 weeks so most of the laboratories in the developing world rely on solid media for culture of microbacteria and uh, the choice and uh, preparation of specimens by various pre treatment procedures has tremendous influence on the sensitivity of results uh then we have uh, micro colony detection on solid media uh, in this method plates uh, poured with a thin layer of uh, middle brook uh, uh, and especially middle brook 7 uh, uh, h11 uh, agar medium are uh, incubated and examined microscopically on alternate days uh, for the first two days uh, 
and uh, less uh, uh, frequently thereafter. Uh, and uh, in, in this case, in less than seven days, uh, micro colonies of mycobacterium tuberculosis can be detected. Um, since uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis grows more rapidly in liquid medium uh, forming uh, strings and tangles uh, which can be observed under the uh, inverted light microscope with uh, around 40 times magnification. Uh, this method is a better alternative for culturing tubercle bacilli. Uh, then we have this uh, uh, radiometric uh, Bactec. Um, uh, 460 TB method and this technique is specific for mycobacterial growth uh, wherein uh, uh, C labeled uh, palmitic acid in uh, 7H12 medium is used and uh, this system detects the presence of mycobacteria based on their metabolism rather than visible growth uh, when the C labeled substrate pr uh, present in the medium is metabolized carbon dioxide is produced and uh, measured by the Bactec system. Then we have the uh, Midget 960 Mycobacteria Detection System. Uh, it is uh, an uh, automated system for the growth and detection of mycobacteria with a capacity to incubate and continuously monitor 960 mycobacteria growth indicator tube um, every 60 minutes uh, for uh, uh, in increase in uh, fluorescence and uh, growth detection is based on the AFB metabolic oxygen utilization and subsequent uh, intensification of an oxygen quenched fluorescent dye contained uh, in a tube of modified midget and uh, a series of algorithms are used to determine presumptive positivity uh, and uh, alert the operator to the presence and location of positive tubes. So the tubes are then subsequently removed when uh, uh, they, they become positive. The rest are still remain uh, within the system. Uh, then we have the uh, MB uh, back system. This is a non uh, radio met, uh, metric uh, continuous monitoring system with a computerized database management. And the system is based on chlorimetric detection of carbon dioxide. Uh, then detection and identification of my, uh, mycobacteria directly from clinical samples uh, can be uh, done. Uh, both uh, genotypic, uh, molecular and uh, phenotypic methods are available uh, with newer modifications for the diagnosis of tuberculosis as an alternative to smear microscopy. And uh, while uh, shedding light on the uh, genotypic methods, we have the polymerase chain reaction, um, typically known as the PCR, which allows sequence of DNA present uh, in only a few copies of mycobacteria to be amplified uh, in vitro, uh, such that the amount of amplified DNA can be visualized and identified. Uh, and if appropriate sequences specific for mycobacteria uh, tuberculosis are selected 10 to uh, 1000 organisms can be readily identified uh, this pcr methodology is rep uh, uh, is rapid results are available within a, a day of dna extraction from the sample a number of tar target genes of uh, mycobacterial dna have been evaluated for diagnosis of pcr uh, uh, by pcr and various other genotypic methods uh, the most common uh, uh, target used uh, uh, in the PCR is the IS-6110. So uh, again, this is a little bit beyond your scope. Uh, but of course, uh, you need to uh, know at least about the methods. Then we have the transcription mediated amplification uh, and nucleic acid amplification this approach identifies the, the presence of genetic information uh, unique to mycobacterium tuberculosis uh, complex directly from pre-processed clinical specimens. Then we have the cartridge-based nucleic acid amplification test. Um, um, the second generation um, uh, um, NAT-based TB diagnostics uh, offer the the prospect of very high sensitivity approaching that of 
liquid culture, uh, uh, the current gold standard for TB diagnosis. Uh, in addition to uh, some versions uh, of the nucleic acid amplification test, uh, which we call NAT, also provides information on drug susceptibility to rifampicin, uh, which is uh, a surrogate marker in most countries for identification of patients who are most likely to have multi-drug resistant TB. Uh, thus, um, uh, this allows the early initiation of standardized second-line TB treatment. Uh, then we have uh, the gene expert, uh, MTB or uh, uh, RIF uh, method which detects DNA sequence specific for mycobacterium tuberculosis and uh, rifampicin resistance by uh, PCR and it is based on the um, CAFE the gene expert system uh, which is a platform for rapid and simple to use nucleic acid amplification tests. Then um, we have the phenotypic methods uh, and one is the fast plaque TB. This is uh, an original uh, uh, phage based test which uses the uh, macro uh, mycobacteriophage to detect the presence of mycobacterium tuberculosis directly from sputum specimens. Uh, it is a rapid uh, manual test easy to perform and uh, has an overall higher sensitivity when compared with sputum smear microscopy uh, in newly diagnosed smear positive TB. Uh, then we have serological diag we do we can undertake serological diagnosis of tuberculosis and uh, most of the serological tests have uh, low turnaround time high negative predictive value and are uh, useful as screening tests uh, the limitation of these tests is uh, low sensitivity in smear negative patients uh, hiv positive cases uh, and uh, in disease uh, endemic countries with a high infection rate. Then um, uh, we have the TB uh, uh, STAT uh, pack. This is a immunochromatographic test based on the detection of antibodies uh, and has been a, and has evolved with the capability to differentiate between active uh, uh, or dormant TB infection in whole blood plasma or serum. Uh, its value in disease endemic countries uh, uh, such as Pakistan is uh, yet to be ascertained. And uh, finally, uh, we already, I discussed in the previous lecture in detail about the tuberculin test. We have the tuberculin test. If uh, you refer to my previous lecture, uh, you can um, uh, just uh, go through the tuberculin test uh, in detail. Uh, how I also enumerated that uh, uh, how it is uh, uh, performed. Then we have the Montos test again, uh, the Montos test or mental Montos test or the Montos screening test or tuberculin sensitivity test or picker test um, or PPD test for purified protein derivative screening tool for TB. Uh, just again to give you a flavor that this tuberculin uh, is uh, a glycerol extract of the tubercul bacillus and uh, PPD tuberculin uh, precipitate of uh, species non-specific molecules obtained from filtrates of sterilized concentrated uh, cultures. Uh, and the standard dose of 5 tuberculin units is injected infradermally and uh, read uh, 48 to 72 hours later. Uh, this is uh, again a repetition I discussed with it. Uh, I showed you this picture in my last uh, lecture. Just again repeating it, you can go through it. The reaction is uh, read by measuring the diameter of induration across the forearm in millimeters. You can just go through it. I uh, discussed with uh, it with you in my last session. Uh, 
Uh, as far as uh, prevention is concerned, uh, uh, we need to improve the resistance of the population. We need to improve nutrition. Uh, then uh, uh, we need to uh, incorporate organization uh, in the uh, prevention of uh, uh, tuberculosis. Uh, as far as uh, improving uh, resistance is concerned, uh, the resistance of the population can be increased by BCG vaccination and by improved nutrition. And when it comes to improving nutrition, uh, um, I would say that uh, uh, nutrition plays a, a very important uh, part in the protection against tuberculosis. And tuberculosis is a socio-economic disease and therefore better living standards go a long way in providing protection against tuberculosis. And the destruction of sputum is uh, of prime importance. Uh, people who just spit around are uh, 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 potential sources of spreading infection. You never know who is uh, uh, a TB positive patient or not. So uh, spitting in public should be prohibited. In uh, some countries, uh, like in the Scandinavian countries, they impose a fine of uh, 10 corona, corona in Sweden especially um, or 20 or 30 coronas also in certain uh, parts of Stockholm. If somebody is found spitting on the road or uh, uh, while walking, so uh, spitting uh, is, uh, uh, is not allowed over there. Uh, as far as nutrition is concerned, uh, uh, further uh, like uh, health education is important. Uh, health education of the public in various aspects of prevention of tuberculosis is essential. The consciousness of the hazards of tuberculosis infection may lead the people to uh, cooperate better. Then public is uh, educated that uh, spitting indiscriminately spreads tuberculosis. The patients uh, have to be taught methods of minimizing the spread of tuberculosis to others. Uh, for this purpose, education by audiovisual aids should be utilized as majority of our population is still uh, illiterate and uh, hence cannot be educated by means of printed material. Uh, and uh, personal approach uh, to people by holding public meetings uh, is one of the uh, most important uh, means of health education and uh, it also motivates the community leaders. Then uh, we should improve uh, living standards, uh, low uh, incidence of tuberculosis uh, in more developed countries can be safely attributed to improving living standards. I haven't mentioned over the, uh, these things over here, but I'm just, uh, I recall them, so I thought of sharing them with you. Uh, then um, uh, one of the most important factors uh, in the fall of incidents uh, in developed countries is the availability of a separate bedroom for every member of the family and uh, better housing program for our country especially in uh, in the similar to those of industrialized uh, uh, especially in industrialized areas is important and uh, then uh, a profile access is important iso niacid is cheap is uh, powerful, relatively non-toxic anti-tubercular drug uh, and has been tried uh, um, uh, of tubercular uh, patients, particularly children. Um, I recall that in a study in the US, it was found that uh, with the regular use of INH tablets uh, for one year, incidence of tuberculosis was significantly reduced in uh, tuberculin positive children. And isoniazid, they use prophylactically interferes with generation of acquired immunity uh, in these subjects. And in Pakistan, where tuberculosis is highly prevalent, it is better to rely on BCG vaccination. Uh, then, as far as organizations are concerned, these methods of prevention of tuberculosis can be applied by means uh, uh, of organizations and uh, it could include field units consisting of tuberculin survey, MMR and BCG vaccination units. Then clinics, uh, we can include clinics in it. Tuberculosis clinics are the most important organizations in the prevention of tuberculosis. 
uh, these should be integrated with the primary uh, healthcare units that is the basic health units where facilities for prevention and treatment should be made available uh, then um, uh, in hospitals uh, beds are still necessary for resistant cases actually ill patients uh, and for surgical treatment uh, in um, uh, then voluntary organizations um, we can use them voluntary organizations like tuberculosis associations play a very important uh, role in the control of tuberculosis they help by carrying the message to the masses ensuring good response of the public to fight against tuberculosis and collection of uh, funds and apply demonstrated uh, uh, as am, uh, amply demonstrated by tuberculosis association of western countries and uh, now we have TB associations even at the district level uh, in Punjab. So uh, main, which is a province of Pakistan, then main fields of activity for voluntary organizations could be uh, raising mass awareness for fight against tuberculosis, imparting health education, providing domiciliary control services, preventing drug default, ensuring public cooperation with TB control organizations, organizing reha rehabilitation program uh, and aftercare then uh, supplementing government efforts uh, collecting funds providing social relief creating climate of legislation and taxation um, uh, now i'm almost near to the end uh, of uh, today's presentation uh, uh, the economic and social burden of tuberculosis is very high and uh, TB primarily affects people in their most productive uh, uh, years of life. Uh, while two-thirds of those affected are males, TB affects more young females, uh, around 50% um, who are below the age of 34 years. And the mortality with TB is more uh, uh, common than all causes of maternal mortality combined. And uh, one-third a female, uh, uh, one-third of the females who are affected have infertility because of TB. Then uh, there is uh, loss is disastrous for those struggling against poverty. They have a high treatment defaulter rate. Uh, this is a, a very uh, uh, informative and interesting uh, uh, diagram which um, I uh, took from uh, uh, a research paper on the internet and it shows the quality of life of an individual and uh, uh, when uh, he or she is affected by tuberculosis how it is affected uh, there are financial issues during diagnosis and treatment success or failure with anti-tuberculous therapy uh, 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 contributes to improving or uh, 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 deteriorating quality of life, adverse effects due to anti-tubercular drug intake, is, um, uh, the other which affect are res residual impairment after treatment completion, comorbid morbid illnesses including HIV co-infection, baseline uh, social and economic status, age, gender and other demographic factors, symptoms and functional limitation due to disease, stigma and isolation after tuberculosis diagnosis, emotional or uh, psychological uh, psychologic dysfunction. So all of these things affect the quality of life of an individual who is affected with tuberculosis. Uh, with this I end today's lecture. Um, I shared these posters with you in my last session as well. Uh, you can just go through them later on, uh, very informative and uh, I end today's session with this poster uh, in which uh, the government of Punjab uh, highlights that uh, a TB diagnosis treatment uh, is provided free of cost in the province and it mentions that 549 TB uh, treatment centers uh, are available throughout the province of Punjab in, um, uh, in rural areas, in tehsil uh, 
headquarter hospitals and district headquarter hospitals and teaching hospitals um, uh, tb uh, um, uh, is diagnosed free of cost and uh, then uh, it is treated free of cost then there are around 170 uh, centers where uh, gene expert system is available uh, it uh, again includes uh, all uh, uh, thq hospitals dhq hospitals teaching hospitals tertiary care hospitals and even larger cities and uh, uh, it is used for diagnosis so this system is now available in 170 uh, uh, centers across the province of punjab then there are 11 uh, special uh, 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 centers uh, for uh, drug resistant tb treatment and uh, this is mentioned over here then the uh, the toll free number is mentioned over here with this uh, i end today's session uh, i thank you all uh, for your uh, uh, time and interest i am um, sure that uh, this second lecture will add tremendously to your knowledge and uh, it will help you uh, to perform uh, much better uh, in diagnosing and treating uh, patients and controlling and preventing the disease are you uh, any of you uh, who listens to my lecture is most welcome to contact me uh, my email address is d r f u a d r a i at the rate of yahoo.co.uk so you can um, drop me an email um, those who have my telephone number can contact me and ask me any questions thank you so much with this we end today's session and um, uh, i will have another uh, lecture which would be the last of the series on tuberculosis the third lecture and i'll discuss uh, further things in that which will uh, really benefit all of you. Thank you so much. Allah Hafiz and take care.